So in the last video, we built out our header. So in this video, let's begin to create our new event page. So back inside our workspace, I'm going to go into my app folder and then inside my new event folder right here and then inside the page.js. And so for this one, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to create our form, which is going to handle our user input. So for this one, I'm going to render out a fragment. And then inside here, I'm going to render out a, let me use a section, which is going to be the parent for everything. And then inside this section, we're going to have a form component. And the form is not going to have an action attribute, but it is going to have an on submit handler so that when we submit the form, then it's going to trigger a function. But for now, let's have it as that so that we can just build out the UI first of all. So for the form, the way I want to do it is I want to render out a first input here and then a second input and then a third and fourth and then the text area is going to be on the bottom. So what I'm going to do therefore is this. I'm going to have a div and then inside this div, I'm going to have another div. And then inside this div, now we're going to have a label and the HTML4 is going to be the event name. So I'm going to say event dash name and then the label is going to say event name. And then below this label, we're going to have an input with a type of text with a name of event dash name with an ID of event dash name. And then we can set it to required and then we can give it a placeholder that says what is the name of the event like so. And let me just go ahead and save that so that we see what we have on the screen. So we're going to have this ugly looking thing. So what we need to do is center this so that it comes to the perfect center. So what I'm going to do is inside the form, I'm going to give this a class name and I'm going to say flex and items dash center and justify dash center. And then on mobile, I want a padding on the top and bottom of 10, which is padding Y and then padding on the X of six. But then on large screens, I want a padding all round of zero. And that is just going to do this. And then on large screens, once again, on large screens, I want a height of screen so that now it is going to be perfectly centered because we are using CSS Flexbox. Now let's go ahead and do this inside of globals.css. I want to go ahead and style out the the, what's it called, the label as well as the input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tailing directive here called at layer components. And then inside here, I want to go ahead and pass in our input and then use the tailing directive at apply. And then what I'm going to do is I want a BG of transparent on the input. So BG transparent, and then I want a padding on the Y of two and then padding on the x of six and not padding on the y of three i think that is a bit bigger it is much better and then the text is going to be white but the placeholder text is going to be gray i you know what? not gray but neutral so placeholder neutral 400 and then let's see we want a border all round so border and then we want a border neutral dash 400 as well and then we want a rounded dash large on all the inputs. So let's save that and then let's see what we have. So we're going to have that for inputs. I know that is a bit lighter. I want it to be a bit more gray. So instead of using 400 here, let me use 600. And what I've done right there is I've just selected the 600 and then said control D. So control D is going to select this other one so that now I can just change them at the same time. So let's use 600. Let's see. I think that is much better. So placeholder 600 and then let's go ahead and style out the labels as well. So for the label, I'm going to say this at apply. And then these are going to be block elements by default so that it goes on top like so. The text is going to be small. So text dash small. And then I'm going to say uppercase and text, uh, sorry, font dash semi bold. So that we're going to have that. You know what, that is a bit too big. Let me say XS which is extra small and then i'm going to say margin on the bottom of two and what you'll notice with what i'm doing here is that i'm not really sticking to the styling that you saw in the in the preview and i'm really doing that because i can't remember the styles that i used when i was building the original one so these are just tests that i'm just looking at it and figuring out how how best to make it look so the styles are not going to be the same as what we had in the preview but the functionality is going to be the same so i think the styling depend depends on you but the functionality like there are multiple ways to do something 
but in this case like you know the functionality doesn't really change all that much but the styling can change depending on how you want to do it so something else that i've just remembered is on the input i want it to be a width of full so width of full on the inputs so that it stretches out to the entire width of the container in which it is placed and then the styling on the input here is going to be the styling for the text area as well so comma text area so that when we create our text area we don't need to style it out again now let's go ahead back inside our page.js and then let me copy this div and paste it below so that now this is going to be event date so event date and then the input type is going to be date and then the name is going to be event date and id is event date and then this is going to be what is the date of the event and then save it and see how our inputs are going to appear now this is what i wanted to do with it but look at this i'm going to go now inside this container div and then give it a class name its name of grid and a gap of four which is just going to separate it out and this is how it go it's going to look on mobile but on medium screens I wanted to have grid columns of two so that now it is placed side by side like so. So that's why I added this parent div and then these two divs inside. Now there is a way that you can style out the calendar icon. There is a calendar icon right here because we're using an input type of date. So the way we do that is I can't remember what it was, but it was something like calendar, WebKit calendar. WebKit calendar dash calendar. I can't remember what it was. Let me just figure it out. So it's called uh, colon colon dash WebKit WebKit dash calendar dash picker dash indicator indicator. And then for this one, we're going to give it a filter and we're going to invert it by one so that now we're going to be able to see the icon right there fantastic and then once we have that then let's go back and let's go ahead and let me copy this div copy this div and then now below this div so below it i'm going to copy or rather to paste down that div and then this is going to be a text area so what i'm going to do is the following the label here can remain this one is going to be event dash description and then this is going to be event description. And then now we're not going to have an input here, but we're going to have a text area. So text areas with columns and rows. And the name for this is going to be event dash description. And then the ID is going to be event dash description. And then the columns are going to be 30, but the rows, we're going to reduce them just slightly so that they're going to be six. And then we're also going to set this to required. And then the placeholder text for this is going to say, give a short description, description about the event. And then save that. Let's see how it looks. So it should now appear there. Fantastic. And then after the event description, we're going to have the event location. So let's go ahead and copy this once again. So copy this div that has the input and the label. And then below this div that has the text area, we're going to go ahead and say this is going to be event location and this is going to say event location as well so this is going to be an input type of text this says event location and then event location and then what is the location of the event and then once again below this div let's paste it down and then this is going to be event organizer organizer event organizer this is going to be an input type of text. This says event organizer. This says event organizer. Noiser. And then this is going to be who, who, who is the primary, primary organizer of the event. Fantastic. So let me go ahead and save that. And then let's take a look. So we have this on the screen and this is styled wrongly. This should be styled the same way as this one on top. So what you need to do is grab these two inputs and place them inside the parent div. And then let's go inside the top div and then let's copy these class names. So copy this and then let's paste them right here so that now they're going to be side by side. Now, see how these inputs and the labels are too close to one another? Let's fix that by going inside our form 
and inside our form we're going to give them a class name of space dash y dash eight and what this does is that it just adds margin on the top and bottom for every parent element that is inside here which are these divs so save that and we're going to have that fantastic so there's our form let's add our submit button for the submit button we're going to go below this div we're going to have a button here with a type of submit and then the text is going to say create new event and then let's tell it out so give it a class name class name of bg white padding on the y of three padding on the x of six this is py not puy and then we're going to give it a rounded dash large and a width of four and then let's see padding y da da let me see we want the outline to be removed by default outline none we don't want a border by default i mean i think tailwind css removes the border by default but we want the text to be neutral dash 900 and the font is going to be semi bold and then on hover i want it to animate dash pulse and then save that let's see so you have create new event and then now look at this when i hover over it it pulses in and out so that looks nice so this is our submit button i mean you don't have to make it a width of full i don't know whether i like this but it doesn't really bother me that much so we can remove this width of full from here and it does that but i think this button is just a bit smaller so with full just to make it stretch out so this is our new event page so in the next video we're going to begin to add the functionality to each one of these inputs